Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Lango Jerry, e a Melambasa, a do Barronga e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two and seven. In the news tonight, over zealous comments not needed, says experts. Fiji to benefit from new climate agreement and police death numbers revealed. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Excessively harsh comments against the flying Fijians, their nationality and in some instances their families have emerged since the loss to Uruguay two days ago. Fans are understandably upset with the team's performance at the Rugby World Cup, but some are making personal attacks and the worry now is the mental health of the players. Here it is. The flying Fijians are already in a pressure cooker environment playing at a World Cup. Now they are faced with people making comments which lack common decency. You can kind of feel a bit threatened, particularly if your family members are being targeted as well. And what that does is it's going to put the players into a kind of protect mode. Um, again, rather than thinking about perform, they're just ruminating on those threats. There's a very fine line of, of where you go with, with negative criticism. Uh, but like I said before, with, with social media, there's, there's no boundary nowadays. The only ones who feel worse about the Uruguay game than the fans are the players themselves. For Fijians to come out and attack them personally when they're at their worst isn't helping. Uh, I spoke with, uh, with the team manager. Uh, he said morale was really down, and, uh, but you know they've, uh, they've done all their, their, their rehab and, and all that and trying to put that away. They're being watched by millions of people. They're being watched by their country. They don't need to be reminded of that. They need to be focusing internally on the game that's ahead. They don't need to be pulled and distracted by this external. And I can only imagine... Uh, what it feels like in the changing room after the game. A lot of criticism is going to weigh on the minds of the players when they take the field against Georgia. How it affects their performance remains to be seen. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Fiji stands to benefit from a new climate trade agreement being negotiated in the bounds of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. The agreement will see fossil fuel subsidies removed and consumers and producers alike will buy and produce environmental goods at a much cheaper price. Eleanor Terangaivu with the report. Fiji together with the heads of government of Iceland, New Zealand, Norway and Costa Rica launched the agreement on climate change, trade and sustainability in New York yesterday. The agreement will see the removal of tariffs on environmental goods and the establishment of new and binding commitments for environmental services between the countries. The elimination of tariffs on environmental goods and new commitments on environmental services will mean these products will become cheaper for consumers and producers in each of our countries. Hopefully that will accelerate access but also uptake and help to improve therefore the environment. The removal of the tariffs will basically increase market access for goods and services that are more sustainable in nature. We uh, also uh, propose that the agreement look at both tariff and more importantly non-tariff barriers uh, and work to remove subsidies for fossil fuels and other products that harm our climate. The agreement will also allow the member countries to look at the option of eco-labeling. We've come here together today to demonstrate joint leadership, show that we mean business, that we will remove barriers, for example, on environmental goods, as has been mentioned, and that will be an essential step to accelerate the transformation towards low emission, climate resilient and sustainable societies. This is a one of its kind policy and a forward looking one at that. There is hope that other countries will jump on board. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Prime Minister of Warenge Mbaini Marama says the resources of small island nations, including Fiji, are at the mercy of changing precipitation patterns. While discussing the challenges facing our water resources in this time of climate change, he says there is a great need for leaders to consider climate resilience. Ali Kimbia with the story. As climate change continues to impact small Pacific island nations, Mbaini Marama says it will drastically impact our water resources. Resources are at the mercy of changing precipitation patterns. 
increasing dry spells, not only cause uh, decreased water flow, but they actually uh, change the flow of some of natural water systems. Bainim Rama says in trying to mitigate these factors, the Fijian government has found it necessary to establish the Ministry of Waterways to manage Fiji's water system as an integrated whole. He says the drying up of water sources can happen in any country in the world. One of the key messages, uh, messages is that the num number of people worldwide who may lack uh, sufficient water for at least one month out of the year could uh, soar from 3.6 billion today to more than 5 billion by 2050. We can only change this green outlook serious efforts at both mitigation and adaptation. Bainimarama says Fiji is now working to marshal all our water resources to mitigate flooding, improve farming irrigation and create the right policy environment for optimal planning and use of our precious water. Ali Kimbia, FVC News. More than 20 police officers have died in the line of duty since last September. Families and friends of these fallen officers gathered at various venues today to mark the Police Remembrance Day. Pranita Prakash reports these officers were between the ages of 23 and 54. A solemn moment for these families as they laid wreaths to pay tribute to the fallen heroes. 26-year-old Olita Merike, who lost her husband in May this year, says life has been difficult since. Why? My husband passed away following an injury he suffered while playing for police rugby team. And just being here brings back all memories. Serving police officer Navitelai Vasawanga, who lost his wife just a month ago, says this day will always hold a special place for him. I, I think I can just uh, cannot uh, forget this. Uh, remember this day, especially my wife, when she passed away while she is on duty. While fallen police officers are being remembered today, Fijians have been reminded to always support the officers. How many times when you see a police officer around us, and I've, I've, I've gone through the same thing, we are wet with, with a sense, it comes to mind that, oh, now we feel safe because he or she is present amongst us. It was an emotional day for families as 23 fallen officers were remembered for their hard work and sacrifice. Today also marks 29 years of Police Remembrance Day. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Meanwhile, Commissioner Northern Chilvesa Wodea says police play an important role in nation building, particularly in maintaining stability in the country. He reminded officers to remain diligent while carrying out their duties to maintain law and order. I urge all of you to continue with the momentum carried out by those, those that have left us to make sure that we will continue to create the very same peaceful environment that was created by them. Fijians who are eligible to vote in the next general election are urged to get their voter cards updated before the end of June next year. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says many Fijians still have a green voter card or voter card one that was issued in 2012 and 2013. He says their FIO will soon expand its voter service centres so Fijians can get their cards updated. We intend to open more centres later on. The FIO will be conducting a nationwide voter registration and card replacement drive uh, early next year to allow for more remote and rural areas to be reached and their cards updated. Up ahead, multi-million dollar emergency operations centre opens and vaccination program shows success. Details after the break. Bula, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua, and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki, I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Disaster emergency response will now be more efficient following the opening of the newly refurbished National Emergency Operations Centre at Masilivata House in Samambula Suva today. The multi-million dollar operations centre will enable the National Disaster Management Office to proactively act during natural disasters. Sanyani Boyla reports. 
The state of the art National Emergency Operations Center cost around $46 million to build. The facility that we will visit now after this balance test has dedicated equipment, has dedicated software, dedicated furniture to allow for the effective and efficient coordination of activities of disaster monitoring, warning, and immediate post disaster response, including disaster relief work. Chane Usamati says the center is well equipped to coordinate disaster monitoring, warning, and immediate post-disaster response. The new National Emergency Operations Center, I'm told, is equipped with a C3 system, command, control, and coordination. This will add value to its work as it is linked with the systems to hazard warning agencies, such as the Fiji Meteorological Service. We have learned many lessons responding to these events, and we know that being prepared is paramount. The facility has been funded by the European Union, who says they will continue to work with the government. Before this refurbishment and massive improvements, emergency response was just coordinated from a regular meeting room filled with whiteboards, phones, a fax machine and computers brought in as and when the National Emergency Operations Center was activated for emergency response. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Empowering women is not just an idea or a concept, it is a necessity. This was highlighted by the Minister for Transport, Chon Usumate, while officiating at the World Maritime Day celebrations. Usumate stressed empowering women need strong actions to address institutional and cultural barriers that have stopped women from being heavily involved in the maritime sector. Lena Rees has more. It was an array of blue and white as people turned out in numbers to celebrate World Maritime Day today at Sukuna Park. The transport minister highlighted that Fiji has defied the traditional ways people look at the role of women at sea. The notion that shipping has always been a male-dominated industry has changed and it must change and it must continue to change. Gender equality is now being recognized as one of the key platforms on which people can build a sustainable future. Fiji as a member state and a hub of the seafaring industry in the Pacific is moving towards sustainability and supporting the, the empowerment of women. Maritime Safety Authority Acting CEO Captain Philip Hill says this year Fiji is recognizing all the women in the maritime sector as an important part of Fiji's trading industry. For Fiji, it is important that we always recognize uh, the shipping industry as you know uh, we depend on the shipping industry for our trade, almost 95% of our trade is through the uh, shipping industry domestically and internationally 90%. As Fiji celebrated World Maritime Day today, women in this industry were also recognized with 18 awards being given out in recognition of their hard work and contribution to the maritime sector. Lena Reese, FBC News. The Consumer Council is helping communities with phasing out single-use plastic bags. This is part of the Council's green consumerism program that is in line with the government's vision to ban the use of plastic bags by next year. Kuroi Tandalala reports. Fijians in the suburb of major towns and city are being urged to come up with creative ideas to replace plastic bags. Our major project is on green consumerism because you know the single-use plastic bags are a phasing out come first January 2020 so what we are trying to do is we are advocating uh, people so that they can change their behavior and get more used to um, shopping bags so what the consumer council currently is doing we are moving from uh, um, village to village trying to uh, raise awareness Fijians are also on board with the government's vision and have welcomed the council's initiative I think instead of the 50 cent levy on plastic, they should have just banned it entirely to help the environment. I think this is a good initiative for the country because we are leading the fight against climate change. Shandil has called on relevant stakeholders to help them in their campaign. But in order for this to come to fruition, consumers must exercise their responsibility to reduce the impact of their consumerism on the environment. And a key part of their responsibility is to reduce our reliance on single-use plastics. The plastic bag levy was introduced in the 2017-2018 national budget and was increased to 20 cents in the new financial year. Plans are to completely phase out the single use of plastic bags by January next year. Koray Tandulala, FBC News. The health ministry is recording more breast cancer cases when compared to cervical cancer. 
The ministry believes cervical cancer cases have declined due to the human papilloma virus vaccines given to 13-year-old girls. Kritika Kumar reports. Cervical cancer cases are expected to drop further as the human papilloma virus vaccines become effective. So we are hopeful that those numbers will stall or even drop. But we also have to realize that there's no, there's no vaccination against breast cancer. So we just have to continue to raise awareness around it. The health minister says doctors and nurses are making sure they provide more efficient formal treatment for patients. Even though we may have all this uh, best practice from around the world, we have to take it with a grain of salt and see what actually works in our city. Oncology specialist Dr. Simon Allen believes health professionals should also care for those who cannot access treatment. I think it's really important that we don't become frightened of facing cancer, that we try and get seen to and pick it up earlier because there are good treatments available. Around 200 cervical cancer cases are recorded annually. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. A 53-year-old Chinese businessman found guilty on charges of obtaining property by deception has paid $1 million in compensation. Adong Zhang's lawyer has also told the court that his client is ready to pay the $100,000 fine and has requested a suspended sentence. The director of public prosecution's lawyer in this matter has submitted that Zhang serve a five-year custodial sentence and pay $1 million in compensation. The court heard that between June 2014 and January 2016, Zhang deceptively obtained property and engaged in money laundering amounting to over $1.2 million. He deceived his business partner on the pretext that a property was being sold at $5.5 million instead of its actual price of $3.3 million. The accused has been further remanded with the case to be recalled on October 14th for sentencing. Anchor Roy joins us now with the latest in business. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up after the break, ANZ opens modern branch in Lombasa. And in growing Fiji, work on riverbank protection begins in Savo Village. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because, because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house. Leading business, Lambasa residents now have a world-class looking bank with ANZ opening its renovated branch in the Northern Division. After more than six decades of operation in the bustling township, a revamp was in order, modernizing the bank and improving service delivery. Going digital, the new branch will offer free Wi-Fi, along with a number of improved facilities and services. In addition, for the staff, a nursing room for working mothers has been constructed as well as a prayer room. Sinifa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money world. The U.S. dollar stood tall today, holding near multi-week highs against most major currencies as heightened risk from tensions of a Sino-U.S. trade war increase its safe haven luster. Markets are also digesting the impeachment probe launched into U.S. President Trump. The probe opened on Wednesday. It initially knocked the dollar, but it soon recovered and surged as investors increasingly view the inquiry as a long-term drag rather than a short-term risk. Elsewhere, the Australian dollar was only marginally firmer as traders wait for a central bank meeting next Tuesday when the Reserve Bank of Australia is widely expected to cut interest rates. Meanwhile, the Kiwi dollar surrendered some of yesterday's gains when Reserve Bank of New Zealand Governor Adrian Orr was cautious about the prospect of further monetary easing. That's all for this week. From HFC Bank, have a blessed weekend. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar made gains against all but one of the foreign currencies we cover. The exception was the New Zealand dollar, which surged yesterday, but apparently has lost those gains during to ongoing trading today. Looking at the commodities market, oil continued its slow descent but was still above $56 per barrel. Gold dropped $4 to $1,504 per ounce 
and then silver closed down at 17.82 per ounce. In growing Fiji, over $600,000 will be spent to construct river wards at Savu Village in Naita Siri. Speaking at the groundbreaking ceremony yesterday, Minister for Waterways Dr. Mahendra Reddy said the environmental issues faced by the villagers testify to the impacts of climate change in our local settings. Dr. Reddy reminded the villagers to safeguard the river wall properties to ensure the safety of Savu's future generations. I want you to be strong. I want you to work hard, bring all this land under production, look out for the children. The children must go to school, give them the right education so that they have the country at heart. That's it from Business Tonight. Sport is up next with Aquila. Thank you, Kuroi. Good evening in Sports Tonight. Former players stand by flying Fijians. And six new reps for Fijiana. Details after the break. Nathango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa. Radio Fiji One. Welcome back. Despite the criticisms the flying Fijians have copped in the last two days, the players and coaching staff remain optimistic and calm as the battle is not over yet. Head coach John McKee says the side has shifted focus on Georgia, while former flying Fijians coach Ilivasi Tembua believes this is the time the team needs the fans to stand by them. Former national reps have taken to social media to defend the flying Fijians following their loss to Uruguay. But head coach John McKee says they have to move on to their next assignment. Important now that we that we yeah we, we take our lessons, but really we the big focus now on on the Georgia match. You know, it's always always was going to be a very very big game for us, and you know that's uh, we need to we need to get things right. We need to we need to you know, really really put in um, a performance of the standard that, that we expect. Yes. Nemani Nandolo, Michael Tangitha Kimbao, Osea Kulini Sao and former Fiji 7s coach Ben Ryan have spoken against the cyberbullying of the flying Fijians. Voiceless Revi, who featured in three World Cups, believes the players should go all out in their next matches to silence the critics. They have uh, better players that are here, but the key thing is you need to give all. Get ready for Georgia, just the first 40 minutes. Then you can take a rest, then you go again. Even Ilivasi Tembua, the man who took Fiji to the World Cup quarterfinal in 2007, says the team needs us now. But uh, I think what it is now, it's, it's how we could encourage them to, to finish and finish well. And yeah, looking forward to our next uh, four years of preparation and, and see where we, we can contribute to uh, empower our younger players to excel to the highest heights. Fiji will play Georgia next Thursday at 5.15 p.m. England head coach Eddie Jones paid tribute to captain George Ford after the fly half masterminded a seven-try, 45 points to seven victory over USA, who had flanker John Quell sent off. The SS Fijian Joe Dokanasinga scored two tries, and Ford was named player of the match in Kobe in Kobe after, the, after he orchestrated his second successive bonus point win that sends England into their next match with Argentina full of confidence. Here is the action. He takes himself forward in open space. England. And they go. Then Wall was fairly successful earlier as they have it for the line. England are over. It's Big Billy. The red jersey swarm. The Roses are over again. Just short of the line. Jonathan Joseph, and now they're over! It's England with a bonus point try! Joe fucking a singer! Joseph gets it away, cutting in beautifully! 
forward with a step. It's wonderful stuff. And just reward. Lewis Ludlum gets over for try number six. Game of Thrones stuff from the replacement. Fucking a singer steps one. Fucking a singer. Well, not all heroes wear capes. The score, yes, the ball. Campbell is in. George controlled the game well. Obviously, conditions were were difficult out there. It was 27 degrees. 80% humidity possibly, you could feel it just sitting in the grandstand, you had uh, sweat dripping off you, um, so the ball was hard to handle and you know, there was maybe a period in the first half we got seduced by the space and, and tried to play more of a passing game where it was a running kicking game but I thought George really led the team well. Italy did exactly what was required against Canada by running in seven tries, winning 48-7 to register the biggest margin of victory to date at Rugby World Cup 2019. Italy also scored seven tries in their first match against Namibia and sit top of, and sit top of Pool B with maximum points as they prepare for a March dinner test in their third game against South Africa. Here are the tries. Rory from McCrory, but away comes Brown Stain. He's got the power to get over. Form in the early stages of this game. Ten points to the good and away they come. It's the captain. It's the second row. It's a second try. Oh, that's a great little pass out. So Negri again, a fine pass to Bellini. Has he got the speed to go all the way past Lasage? It's going to be the try for Mattia Bellini. Bellini. Bellini to Minocci and if anybody deserves a try it's Matteo Minocci you have to be pretty happy I thought that we started the game really well and that's where we imposed ourselves fell away a bit in the, the last 20 minutes of the second half but then came out and, and drove it home drove home the, the physical dominance we had and uh, you know it's just glad that we we're able to put on a show these, these crowds are incredible here and um, we'll then just have to look forward I promised the guys a bit of an old school night earlier in the week a four-day turnaround it's tough you know for any team mentally as well as physically so the the whole squad have reacted brilliantly uh, we're looking forward to tonight and then we'll start looking ahead after uh, tomorrow morning to the, the next challenge meanwhile england coach eddie jones has avoided commenting on foul play and instead given praise to world rugby's attempts to make tier two nations such as the usa more competitive against the likes of england you're also seeing i think the tier two countries much better physically prepared like we've played against tonga in america now and they've got, all of them have got big physical packs. They're fitter than they ever have been. And it's a great thing for the World Cup because, you know, we've got these tier two countries fighting hard um, and it's producing some great rugby. Um, so it's a credit to world rugby. You know, they don't get too many credits, but they should get credit for, for driving tier two development. And it's great for the game. Taranaki have kept their Mita 10 Cup championship Semi-final hopes alive after beating Southland 19 points to nil last night. It was a welcome victory for Taranaki, who had gone off the boil, losing four straight after starting the competition with three wins on the trot. There are six new faces in the Fijiana 7 squad, and coach Sayasi Fuli says each has an integral role to play in the team. Fuli says the new, player are, the new players are aged between 18 and 19 and are straight out of secondary school. The inclusion in the team is to create a pathway for women in sports. But we beg him with the details. Coach Fuli's foresight is behind the inclusion of these six young players in the team. Uh, Olympic next year, um, uh, who knows, maybe six uh, of our players will uh, retire after that uh, campaign. And that is why we introduced the six uh, young girls to continue that uh, success and play. Captain Rusila Nangasau believes the new members are gelling on well with the team. Our main aim to get more girls uh, to compete in the tournament because uh, that was our main aim from last year uh, to improve the women's rugby here in Fiji. The Fijiana squad will take part in the Oceania 7th tournament at Suva's ANZ Stadium in November. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. In a team full of big names, Kiwi Joseph Manu has quietly become one of the Roosters' most damaging NRL players. The Melbourne Storm will be looking to stifle his spectacular skill set when the teams meet in tomorrow's semi-final. In today's play of the day, week one of the Rugby World Cup has seen great action. Let's see a quick wrap of how it progressed.
Welcome to the land of the rising sun. These are the new warriors of Japanese folklore. That's it from sports in new media after the break. A new device let users listen to the sound of plants. Details coming up. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife. हम लोग रेडियो फिजी तू बहुत सुंदर से सुनता है बहुत अच्छा प्रोग्राम नंबर वन रेडियो कुमार सामी नायक है गोंगो अलगू लटाव का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे कुमार नकाफी में रहता है रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Hello there and welcome to the weather world. We have made it to our wonderful most awaited Friday. Now that the weekend is here and the weather for some places look absolutely stunning, think of all the possible things you could do. Oh, it's also mango season so it's yummy in my tummy time too. Now moving to the west, sunlight through a bit humid with a cloud side expected. Eastwards from Back Harbour to Suba, a rainy start with the weather being settled later in the day. Pull your blankets up tonight. And up north, can you feel the warmth of the sand? Well, maybe you took that relaxing walk while sunshine was out and beaming. I think I should get an award for my imagination. At sea, south east winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.22 p.m. with high tide at 5.32 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.18. For tomorrow, nice and bright are the two magical words, have lots of fun under the sun. Tomorrow's temperatures, the western side will feel more warm than the central. The burning west will have highs of 32 to 33 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, light showers in prediction, so... Have a wonderful and happening weekend. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, who do you think will win the match between Australia and Wales on Sunday? Australia, because if Australia wins, Fiji qualifies too for the quarterfinals. I'm supporting Wales because the players are performing well. My team is Wales. Uh, because uh, they are a strong team, they can beat Rosy. Well, it's because I need uh, our team to bring up on the quarterfinal. Uh, Wales will win because last week Australia beat Fiji. Australia should win because Fiji is going to have a chance to go in the quarterfinal. I would say Australia so that Fiji has a chance. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, Thailand's temple on the glass cliff offers a modern take on Buddhist temples. Now, recapping the main stories. Overzealous comments not needed, say experts. Fiji to benefit from new climate agreement. And over 20 police officers have died in the past year. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, should match officials who make blunders at Rugby World Cup be severely reprimanded? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day sent in by Mary, a beautiful sunset captured from Namotu Island. 
You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate, I'm from Ba, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Makereta from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Yorkoka, and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.